Tambo Machai is an ancient site located within Peru that, like so many others within this remarkable landscape, clearly demonstrates a level of sophistication within its stonework unquestionably far out of the reaches of those who are academically claimed to have been the builders of these remarkable sites. It is a site that not only possesses the same mind-boggling methods of polygonal masonry as that of Machu Picchu in Sacsayhuaman, among many others, but also exhibits an excellent example of the levels of refinement that also went into the building of the irrigation systems throughout the area. Systems that, although unimaginably old, still function perfectly to this day. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing regarding this area, even eclipsing these astonishing feats of ancient engineering, is an area in particular which exhibits some of the most perplexing peculiar feature to be found anywhere in ancient Peru. This area of stone is not merely vitrified, but was, at some point within the distant past, turned to lava. With the limited investigations available, predictably none of which undertaken by funded academics, it has been revealed that this mysterious event did not occur as one would have presumed from a heating from above, but from beneath, or perhaps from within the center of the stonework, successfully melting the stone wall in its entirety into a pool of liquid magma. And although largely overlooked by tourists, and indeed academics alike, the evidence of the stone having once turned to liquid is undeniable. The question then, what turned this stone to liquid? Was it some form of weapon? Or perhaps is this evidence to suggest how polygonal walls were once built? Perhaps these as yet unexplained polygonal walls were constructed with such precision due to a past ability of its builders, able to melt and shape these stones prior to placement. Or perhaps, could this melted stone be evidence of a war? One that occurred between the inhabitants of these ancient ruins and an unknown entity, ultimately resulting in their demise. Perhaps being the reason why these highly advanced, highly capable ancient people from these civilizations not only mysteriously disappeared, but left many a quarry amid ancient stonework seemingly abandoned, left where we find them today. In another area of the world, far away from Peru, there also exists compelling evidence of such a war, having actually once taken place with a possible entity from above. Eerily, this site is claimed as the remnants of a battle with God, specifically surrounding the biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sulfur balls embedded among the landscape at this specific site is undoubtedly compelling evidence to support these accounts of war, a holy war, undertaken at this specific location that, regardless of holy scripture, was fought with a foe of considerable ability. Exclusively found at these sites are white, pure sulfur balls embedded in the mortar that now, due to their tremendous age, are slowly turning to powder. The sulfur found at these sites has also, intriguingly, been tested from 93% to as high as 98% pure sulfur, with trace metals such as magnesium found within that would have produced astounding heat, easily capable of melting stainless steel and indeed the stones within Peru. Furthermore, the brimstone found is significantly different to sulfur found elsewhere, almost as if this brimstone was specifically designed. For example, Sulfur from within natural geothermal regions is yellow in crystal form. We find all these evidential factors highly compelling. Liquid mercury is a very curious metal. It has a very low conductivity, yet it does have its uses. Accumulated by what we posit is now a lost civilization. It is an area of research which is suspiciously absent from ancient history. Although its presence throughout Mesoamerica can be found documented within modern literature, it is in the form of a powdery red pigment known as cinnabar. Liquid mercury is, quote, extremely rare, end quote. Yet explorers have not only discovered literal pools of it under claimed Mayan ruins, 
but its presence has also been exposed within the secretive nation of China. There is a reported moat of mercury protecting what is claimed to be a known Chinese emperor from within New World history. Qin Shi Huang, known as the first emperor of China, is said to lie within this unopened tomb, one which we have covered before due to it being guarded by an entire army of terracotta soldiers, fully armed, complete with a cavalry unit, all individual and many still retaining their human-like paint job, along with a curious pigment known as on purple recently discovered to be multidimensional in nature. Along with the army are booby-trapped layers before the entranceway, with cocked crossbows still in place, tipped with poison arrowheads. Yet I digress. We hypothesize this mysterious metal is not only actively overlooked by individuals who are funded to produce answers, not curiosity but that it further connects a now lost, yet once worldwide and clearly advanced civilization, once capable of harnessing and using such fantastic amounts of mercury. Furthermore, mercury can be used to hermetically seal objects from the air and protect them against water damage, with one place we know this to have occurred is that of Oak Island. From inside the actual money hole itself, brought up during sample drillings upon a small piece of parchment. Could these discoveries of an ancient utilization of this metal give credence to the claims of a priceless artifact still be found not only in Oak Island, but also within the unopened Emperor's Tomb? Could there, in fact, be the Ark of the Covenant, like the legends have told of, hidden within this Nova Scotian island? Could there be unimaginable lost riches within a temple guarded by an entire army of multidimensional soldiers along with its moat of mercury? We find such possibilities highly compelling. Teotihuacan, a site we have covered many times here upon our channel. Most recently, we discussed the impressive amount of electrical material found within the numerous pyramids that dot the site, known as mica a notorious modern-day electrical insulator that's physical origins were found to have been from a quarry over 3,200 kilometers away, within Brazil. When Spanish explorers first visited the area, they asked the Aztecs who built these marvelous buildings. The Aztecs replied that it was the Quina Metzen, a quote, race of giants who came from the heavens in the time of the second sun. It is clearly a site of tremendous importance regarding lost knowledge here upon our planet. Knowledge which could have been left within our very distant past. And now, an eight-year project has discovered a secret tunnel beneath the third largest pyramid within the area. A tunnel which archaeologists suspect will lead to a royal tomb. Discovered in 2003 with the use of robotic technology, Similar to the technology used to discover the secret chamber within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, rumored to also be that of a royal tomb. Littered with artifacts which have remained untouched for untold millennia, now thought to be over 50,000 separate items, shedding light onto the life of those who built this amazing place, not only reveal who they actually were, but explain their religious beliefs, their technical prowess, and indeed how they built them but most importantly, for what purpose? Upon exploring the tunnel, archaeologists have discovered an enormous pool of liquid mercury, and supposedly, it is a massive quantity filling a mysterious basin at the end of the tunnel. Could a king's tomb or ritual chamber possibly lay far below this pool of mysterious mercury? Mexican researcher Sergio Gomez has somehow been allowed to release all of these amazing discoveries, found beneath the Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent publicly, receiving little academic resistance since. Mercury is toxic and capable of devastating the human body through prolonged exposure. Academia perceived mercury as having no practical purpose within ancient Mesoamerica. But interestingly, it has been discovered at other sites. Rosemary Joyce, a professor of anthropology at the University of California, Berkeley, said that archaeologists have found mercury at three other sites around Central America, not to mention our own research into Oak Island, which has also held a legend of liquid mercury for many years.
Its presence in Teotihuacan is undoubtedly perplexing and intriguing. Gomez speculated that the Mercury could be a sign that his team is close to uncovering the first royal tomb ever found in Teotihuacan. The Mercury may have symbolized an underworld river or lake, Gomez postulated, an idea that resonated with Annabeth Hedrick, a professor at the University of Denver and the author of works on Teotihuacan and Mesoamerican art. Quote, the shimmering, reflective qualities of liquid mercury may have resembled an underworld river, not that different from the river Styx. Hedrick continues, if only in the concept that it's the entrance to the supernatural world and the entrance to the underworld, end quote. Not only did the people of Mesoamerica clearly figure out how to create or derive liquid mercury from mercury ore, they also knew of deep underground water systems and lakes that could be accessed through caves. Rosemary Joyce said the ancient Mesoamericans could produce liquid mercury by heating mercury ore, known as cinnabar, which they also used for its blood-red pigment. Yet, just how these ancient people managed to figure all these amazing things out remains a mystery. We may indeed be on the precipice of one of the most important discoveries of our modern age. We will keep you posted. The Terracotta Army Undoubtedly, one of the most remarkable archaeological discoveries of modern times. It is a stone army that so far consists of over 8,000 individually detailed warriors, 700 uniquely carved horses, along with 130 chariots. What makes this feat, and indeed the ancient site, so astonishing, apart from the clear, incredible precision, delicacy, and artistic prowess of their creators, is the incredibly advanced technologies found to litter the army and the possible tomb. A supposed tomb with what we suspect is a mystery inhabitant, which, according to academia, this army was created to guard and carry over with into the afterlife. It is claimed that it is the burial of the first ever emperor of China, known as Qin Shi Huang. And although academia has concluded that these ancient soldiers were created during this well-studied, more modern emperor's reign, we feel, due to the numerous mysterious factors attached to these miraculous artworks, in which we are about to convey, strongly suggests that not only was this accomplishment far out of the reach of these well-studied recent ancestors, but are indicative of lost civilization which we have on our channel been searching so long to unearth and lay eyes upon. Firstly, the warriors themselves were all created to represent an individual, painted with incredibly precise lifelike colors, which included a pigment known as Han Purple. A pigment so advanced, chemists were unable to replicate it until 1992. After it was successfully recreated, it was discovered that it eliminates an entire visual dimension, making waves in two dimensions. What's more, most intriguing, is the fact that although academia claims each soldier was a precise recreation of an individual subject, each warrior is around 2 meters tall. A height factor we have long postulated was a common reality, far back within antiquity. The metallurgy is another smoking gun. Swords unearthed in the pits were, regardless of their tremendous age, still sharp, showing no signs of rust and still appearing new and shiny. All masterfully crafted, and according to tests of their surfaces, underwent an oxidation treatment with chromic salts. However, based on historical literature, another advanced technology which was not invented by modern man until 1937. Furthermore, supporting our posit that these warriors are not dated from an era 2000 years ago, but used as this culture's inspiration, is the fact that regardless of the incredible discovery, no excavation of the purported tomb at the site, claimed by academia as the actual purpose for the incredible array of stone warriors, the Chinese government blocks all attempts to investigate the tomb. We feel this is likely due to the incredibly strong evidence of advanced technologies already publicly shared. 
discovered at the entrance to this mysterious lair, like a scene from Indiana Jones, is booby trap mechanisms involving advanced crossbows, loaded with venom-tipped arrows, still in situ within the walls of the entrance, torque bows which were clearly created by a far more advanced people than we are currently being led to believe. According to academia, who has put forth a claim, we feel, is an attempt to impress and stifle further inquisition. These masterfully carved warriors were, apparently, created by over 700,000 men over a period of more than 20 years. Yet, as any artistically talented person will tell you, especially a sculptor, these warriors were not created by the hands of untrained slaves who were ordered to chisel them out from the notoriously fragile terracotta. These warriors were undoubtedly created by individuals of tremendous talent and ability. If one requires further supportive evidence for this obvious hypothesis, a second terracotta army found within Western Han is far more realistic to the era, crudely created, and of a tiny scale, we feel, these warriors are clear evidence of the actual capabilities of this dynasty's inhabitants, and also, we feel, a clear indication that these initial emperors had indeed discovered the original life-size warriors at some point within antiquity, undoubtedly attempting to copy their advanced technologies, kickstarting their success in combat, especially armoring techniques, thus giving academia convenient factors from these recent ancestors to support their attempts to link and claim these remarkable statues as modern creations. This, regardless of the astonishing technological prowess which these 10,000 strong artistic masterpieces were drenched in. Deciding to ignore such controversial facts in favor of conclusive assumption, which once gained them extensive public faith in their ongoing, severe, selective research syndrome. Before Chinese censorship of the site had become a complete quarantine, modern archaeologists had intriguingly found tremendous amounts of mercury, a difficult element to have acquired in mass 2,000 years ago within the soil surrounding the mausoleum. A chemical also found beneath Teotihuacan, which we feel further supports our suspicions that this site, along with these incredible warriors, is far older and incredibly more advanced than currently attested, and is actually indicative of lost technology left by a now lost civilization. Who actually created the terracotta warriors? Who do they actually depict? Why are they so tall? Who built the complex underground lair, now conveniently shut off? never publicly explored, left triggered with advanced booby trapping. What is within? What are these booby traps protecting? It is a sight we find incredibly compelling. Since the beginning of time, man has searched for different and more exotic materials for use with the pigments used in their art. From simple cave paintings many tens of thousands of years ago, to the perfection seen from masters during the Renaissance, none have ever been as interesting as our next artifact. Known as Han Purple, it has been found on relics dating back 3,000 years. Used in wall paintings, on the terracotta warriors, ceramics, metalwares, and jewelry, the pigment found its way into many ancient Chinese art and amazingly, this intriguing pigment is a technological wonder. It was such an enigma made through such a complex process using many different materials in precise proportions and then heating the mixtures to incredible temperatures. Researchers at the British Museum have discovered that when the pigment is exposed to an LED light source, Han purple pigment will emit a powerful ray of light in near-infrared. According to their study, published in the journal Analytical and Bioanalytical Chemistry, the Han purple pigments show up with startling clarity when under the right conditions, meaning that even faint traces of the color which are invisible to the naked eye can be seen with infrared sensors. A complex pigment clearly developed for complex applications. Unlike natural dyes found within antiquity, which are organic compounds, Han purple is a synthetic pigment made from inorganic materials. 
Scientist Elizabeth Fitzhugh, a conservator at the Smithsonian, was the first to identify the complex synthetic compound that makes up Han Purple, including a barium copper silicate. How these ancient people acquired such knowledge is clearly a question which needs to be answered. And although many people often scoff at ancient alien theories, quantum physicists from Stanford, Los Alamos National Laboratory, and the Institute for Solid State Physics of Tokyo have reported that when Han Purple is exposed to extreme cold and a high magnetic field, the chemical structure of the pigment enters a new state called the quantum critical point, in which three-dimensional materials loses a dimension. We have shown for the first time that the collective behavior in a bulk three-dimensional material can actually occur in just two dimensions. Ian Fisher, an assistant professor of applied physics at Stanford said in the Stanford report. The researchers have said that the discovery may help understand the required properties of new materials, including more exotic superconductors. Was this marvelous pigment a gift from somewhere else? We find the evidence to be highly compelling. Throughout history, a vast array of individuals who, for whatever reason, became figures idolized by their civilizations. Some even seen as godly-like figures, sentient, divine beings, whom, upon their passage into the next life, were believed to live on, often as deities, according to New World History. The most academically funded research practices in said preparations into the afterlife is undoubtedly that of the mummies found within ancient Egypt. The Valley of the Kings, impressive protective strategy against tomb raiders. Yet the list of similar protective practices is long. The Sphinx, even claimed as the protector of the pharaoh's pyramidal tombs by some, although we, like so many others, based upon a lack of evidence, is untrue due to the pyramids never having been proven tombs. Yet this theme of protecting the dead clearly permeated historians' minds, and, we suspect, this is due to its recurrence throughout history. The curse of Tutankhamun, yet another relative story deriving from Egypt, with mysterious goings-on during Howard Carter's incredible discovery of King Tut's tomb. Objects of interesting motivations would often be left with these important figures, not just solid gold death masks, thrones, coins, canes, and other jewels, but people of nobility have even been found buried within chariots, complete with eight horses sacrificed for the burial. We have also covered many other booby-trapped tombs, proof of the ancients' own beliefs in their own versions of the afterlife. Yet, unquestionably, the most unique, and due to it remaining unsealed, the most enigmatic of them all, lay still guarded by an equally unique terracotta army. For all soldiers carved to depict an individual man, and the quantum phenomenon interdimensional pigment, Han Purple, still visible upon many of this army. What makes this site so unique from all others is that an entire army, along with other baffling technology, guard a tomb clearly constructed over such an incredible amount of time and with such enormous effort. It must contain someone or something of unimaginable importance. Furthermore, as mentioned in a previous video, poison-tipped, inexplicably advanced compound crossbows have been found still laying in situ, protecting the entrance, though at some point coated in sediment, possibly why the terracotta army was found buried. Was this tomb pre-flood? Radar scanning technologies are advancing rapidly, and regardless of the Chinese strict forbiddance to enter the tomb, technology is finally allowing us our first look into just what exactly such an incredible display of power has been guarding for all this time. It's an investigation we find incredibly exciting. There are places on our planet that still contain some astonishing ruins, originating from a very distant antiquity. Quietly studied by academics the world over, and just as quietly dismissed as modern works, are from not-so-distant, more primitive ancestors. Or, if fated enough, 
attributed to natural activities by geologists. Funded by the same infrastructure as that of the academic world, paid to explain the origins of the ruins of Earth to a particular already permitted timeline. Not only are these funded individuals directed to only attribute such sites to a certain timeline, but if they go against the grain by actually attributing them or sharing data contradicting such timelines, it is often thrown out and their funding ended, slowly drying up with their future opportunities in the field as well as their prospects and ultimately their reputation. Regardless of this, facts do not lie. And the more one explores the anomalies we present here on our channel, the more one may find themselves coming to similar conclusions as we have regarding the illogical nature and often impossibility of these advanced ancient ruins having been created using now lost knowledge or technologies once being the work of the academically claimed culprit. Siberia is indeed one of these places, and due to the remote nature of some of the ruins found here, are easily dismissed, hidden from a modern world, battling to regain the truth regarding our past. Altai is an area that contains many ancient megaliths. So old, they are undeniably the legacy of a civilization now long lost to history. Yet this tremendous age is a double-edged sword. Not only could they eventually reveal, like done during current studies of the antiquities already covered on the channel, reveal that ruins found across the globe just don't date from a single civilization, but are, in fact, the work of separate civilizations who have presumably been and gone at different times, making the flourishment of man and, indeed, our eventual decline a cyclical occurrence. But due to tremendous age, can also be dismissed as nothing but mere geological features. This regardless of the still remaining highly eroded evidence that can be found at such sites, which is indeed indicative of artificial origins. Furthermore, there also exists a number of supposed hillsides that just like the pyramids of Giza, have resisted the tests of time more successfully than their polygonal counterparts meaning their undeniable shape and alignments have survived long enough for them to stick out like sore thumbs, amongst a landscape which is unbalanced and predictably unaligned, a background made by nature, yet their angle of descent, their ridged edges, and ultimately their artificial nature still allows one to recognize them and identify them as not only places of interest, but ancient pyramids hidden from man for countless millennia, protected by mountain ranges and hostile, inhospitable climates, which our modern technology is slowly allowing us to rediscover, regardless of a modern academia who would rather we didn't. Additionally, not only can these artificial and highly intriguing features be found here, but also possible evidence to indicate how their creators came to an untimely demise possibly at the hands of immense heat and a possible natural disaster. Found within the nature reserve of Ergaki, among the western Sayan mountain range, is a feature that has rarely been seen, let alone photographed, an entire side of one of the mountains was, at some time within the distant past, turned to magma during an event yet to be understood. Turned to liquid magma, this stone flowed like liquid but only for a short period before re-solidifying. A relic from a disastrous event undoubtedly packed tremendous force. Yet, whether this is evidence of the event which decimated the ancient civilization responsible for Siberia's ruins is yet to be fully known. It is a place that is, undoubtedly, highly compelling.